Hi there. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Deepak Manjal of the Cisco Data Center Solutions Marketing Team. And with me, I have J.R. Rivers on our engineering team. We're here today to talk to you about data center Ethernet and the importance of this technology to support new applications, such as virtualization and I.O. consolidation. So let me start with a question for you, J.R. Tell me a little bit about DCE and what is data center Ethernet? So data center Ethernet is a collection of technologies that we've developed with a large set of industry partners to take Ethernet and move it from today to suit it for the next generation data center applications. Um, you can look at the set of improvements that we've done and kind of group them three ways. The first of which is to provide truly differentiated classes of service in the context of Ethernet. The second is to improve the aggregate bandwidth you get out of an Ethernet network through various forms of multipathing congestion management. And then the last is a set of management paradigms, both SNMP MIBs as well as link level negotiation protocols that allow these technologies to be deployed operationally. Okay. So let's take a um, look at each one of these three individual points that you mentioned. Uh, what has been done to really define these differentiated classes of service? Right. Um, so Ethernet has this concept of priorities. There are eight priority levels inside of Ethernet. Right. And uh, what we've done is made each of those a distinct class of service with a, a set of very operationally dis different characteristics. Mm -hmm. We've defined uh, a, a link level flow control mechanism, it's called priority based flow control, that allows you to pause or stall one of these classes of service while letting the other ones go through. Um, you can configure priority based flow control on a, you know, turn it on or off on each class independently. Um, we've also taken link scheduling and formalized it. So when you look at these priorities, we can assign a certain amount of a link's bandwidth to each of these priorities and, and then um, allow the, the traffic to be appropriate, uh, appro proportioned appropriately. So that sounds kind of easy, but in general, in the past, um, many vendors have had their own little secret sauce around link scheduling or, or subpar functionality. What we've kind of done is come across with a, a consistent set of parameters so, again, network administrators can def architect their data center and get predictable behavior out of each component. Excellent. So I think I understand the benefits of why you want differentiated classes of service for different kinds of applications. But I think another important feature set of the data center Ethernet protocol is really to enhance scalability. So you mentioned multipathing. Uh, what forms of multipathing are part of DCE? Right. So multipathing in the context of DC is, is a very broad set of solutions based on different Cisco products. Um, two really good examples are the, the Catalyst 6500 and the Nexus 7000 have the ability to take ether channels and connect them up to two separate chassis that are peered together to provide a, a higher aggregate link bandwidth. In the past, if you had a, an access layer switch and you connected it up to two different 6500s or Nexus 7000s, one of the links would be partitioned or turned off by spanning tree. Whereas with these, these ether channel enhancements, it's virtual switching system for the 6500 mm -hmm. or multi-chassis ether channel for the Nexus 7000, you can use both of those links at the same time and increase the aggregate bandwidth inside the data center. Um, the Nexus 5000 has two forwarding modes, one for ethernet and one for fiber channel, that make the Nexus 5000 look like, almost like a multi-addressed host. So all the servers that live below the Nexus 5000 get presented to the upper layers on, on specific uplinks. Um, this allows us to, to scale the, the bandwidth allowed, uh, or available to those hosts by adding more uplinks. And it also reduces the control plane load, the spanning tree or fiber channel for, shortest path first uh, control load on the distribution and aggregation layer switches. Okay, very good. So let's uh, look at some of these applications and services and tell me, you know, how can they be used in the real world? Give me, an ex give me a few examples. All right. Um, fiber channel over Ethernet is, is, is kind of the dominant focused use case that people look at today when they're analyzing this. Uh, fiber channel has a set of characteristics that are very different than Ethernet today. Fiber channel is a lossless data path with um, a lot of a rich set of multipathing built in. Ethernet traditionally was a tree-based network and it's based on dropping of frames. Um, by using these QoS and multipathing enhancements, you're able to deploy fiber channel over Ethernet, or you know, fiber channel over Ethernet network, right. which is the fiber channel over Ethernet initiative, 
and get the same characteristics you would have gotten from your fiber channel network by using an Ethernet infrastructure. Another example is using these enhancements to provide uh, higher performing clustering applications. Many clusters break their traffic generally into two different forms. One will be large bulk data transfers when you're moving a file around or, or a large big piece of data. And then you also ha tend to have a lot of little control messages that go back and forth between cluster peers. Um, traditionally over Ethernet, those would all use TCP and they would use get the same service. So if there was congestion in the network, you would drop a frame. Right. It's okay when it's one of those big bulk data transfers because TCP reacts and everybody's happy. If it's one of those little control messages, though, the cluster will stall until that mes message gets resent. By using the differentiated classes of service, the network architect can put the bulk data transfer on one class and the control messages on another and never drop a, a frame in the control class and never stall that, the clustering application, greatly improving the performance. Excellent. Okay. So you mentioned a lot of new protocols, and when I think of new protocols, I think of standards, and I think of uh, working with other partners and other customers. Uh, tell me, give me an update on where DCE or Data Center Ethernet is in the standards process. All right. Um, we've been working with a large set of ecosystem partners, adapter vendors, switch vendors, uh, server vendors, our friends, as well as our competitors, to try to, to make sure that this set of initiatives goes through and it becomes available to Cisco customers in a reasonable time frame. There's a data center bridging initiative going on in 802.1 right now, and it's considering three of these DCE initiatives. Okay. The priority-based flow control is being submitted for project authorization to, as we speak, right, almost right now. Um, and we have a pretty good indication that that project authorization will be approved. There's been a lot of discussion and debate around the topic in the 802.1, and people are now moving on ready to formalize the process. The link scheduling is called uh, enhanced transmission selection. It's being considered in 802.1 QAZ, right. and uh, that effort has already submitted a project authorization request, and that's expected to be approved again eminently. Uh, there's another DCE technology we haven't talked about yet. It's congestion notification, and that's being considered in 802.1 QAU. That effort's been going on for quite some time, a little bit over a year now. Um, they've defined a control loop. It's a, kind of a PhD level problem, so people have been working very hard on that. Um, and now they're moving on to consider the framing and signaling necessary to accomplish the goals. Okay. So it looks like a lot of these standards are in process, but uh, soon to be cert uh, standardized. Would it be fair to say that Cisco data center Ethernet products will conform to these standards? Absolutely. We've been, we've been working hard on all the fronts, both making sure that our technology meets the compromises that we come up to with our partners, as well as on the front end, starting off these initiatives and seeding the, the field with proposals. Okay. Now, so I think when you look at a complete solution involving data center and Ethernet with switch products and other products that make up the complete solution, obviously we're not going to go to market by ourselves. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, other partners that uh, are going to be uh, part of the Cisco data center Ethernet solution? Now, that's kind of a, an awkward question, um, but it's a good one. The, uh, as of right now, none of our partners plans are public re regarding DCE. Uh, suffice to say, though, that, that this type of technology can never be done in a closed or proprietary way. You know, in, in days past, people could bring out proprietary systems. Token Ring happens to be a very good example. It was a proprietary system that eventually became standardized. Um, those days don't e exist anymore in the data center ecosystem. We had to work very closely, like I said before, with our partners as well as our competitors to make sure that that these technologies were available, they would be broadly supported across the board and be available to, for Cisco customers over time. Okay. Well, good, JR. I think uh, you've given me a really good overview of, of the data center Ethernet protocol and, and the standards efforts and how Cisco is going to bring uh, the, the innovation and technology to market. Um, thank you uh, for attending uh, this broadcast. Hopefully you also got a good overview of the data center Ethernet capability. Thank you, JR. Thank you, Deepak.